have one? According to my husband, the answer is a resounding no. no. I'm 26 weeks pregnantly pregnant. <laughs> I'm 26 weeks pregnant and I'm planning to have a standard hospital birth because of my age and the fact that I got pregnant through IVF. I'm 34. I'm automatically classified as a high risk pregnancy, even though so far I haven't had any complications and both me and the baby are looking good. Knock on wood. But I'm still very drawn to the home birth content I see on social media. And how could I not be? These home births look positively magical. Magical is a word that they use a lot in the home birth world. And empowering. They're magical and empowering and freeing and supernatural. Those are the main buzzwords. Supernatural? Buzz supernatural! That's hopefully not true with any of these births. Do they know what that word means? <laughs> it sounds like they don't. My doula was a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? I could give birth in the ocean? With the dolphins? More on that later. I think a lot of these home birth advocates bring up some very valid criticisms of hospital births and the over-medicalization of labor in general, but I think also a lot of them conveniently ignore a few of the finer points that make hospital births an inevitability for many of us. Your baby, your birth, and your choice. And whatever your dream birth looks like to you, we encourage you to chase it and know that it's possible. Before I go any further, I want to clarify some terms. Natural birth just refers to a birth without any kind of drug. Home births are typically attended by a midwife. Home birth just is a catch-all term for a birth that takes place at home. A free birth is a birth that has no medical professionals present. Free birthers are totally eschewing the idea that any kind of medical intervention is necessary. Free births are not attended by a midwife, but they may have a doula present. Midwives are trained medical professionals. In New York State, I know that they have to have a master's degree and they have to pass the American Midwifery Certification Board licensing exam. Registered midwives complete a three-year degree. Dolphins don't. The requirements from what I've seen in New York for becoming a doula are far less stringent. It's a few childbirthing classes, some hands-on experience, and I think you have to turn in an essay. Boom, you're a doula. Doulas can't perform any kind of medical interventions if something does go wrong, which does happen, no matter what the free birthers would have you believe. The free birther community is where you find the extremist, anti-vax, off-the-grid, QAnon, earth goddess, warrior, mama, howling at the moon, eating placenta for breakfast crowd. I think that as parents, you have to do what you think is best for your family and your kids, and I'm not gonna be the one to kick down your door. I don't know why you wouldn't want a midwife there, but again, uh, I'm not the boss of you, and I don't uh, want to be. I'm not your mother. Is it a girl or a boy? It's a girl. It's a girl. <laughs> Let's talk about some of the reasons that someone might want a home birth or a free birth. Number one, I wanted to be in the comfort of my own home. I had heard before that you go through labor way better when your body knows you're safe. So I just wanted to create an environment that I felt safe in and exactly what I wanted. You can do this if you're in a hospital too, but my midwife just happened to be certified to do it, which was encapsulating my placenta. 
And I know it sounds gross, but once I learned about it, it was absolutely no doubt in my mind that I was going to do it. One, it helps bring in your milk supply. Two, it helps balance your hormones so you most likely won't get baby blues. And it significantly reduces the amount of bleeding you have after. I literally think I stopped bleeding in a week. Those are just a few reasons why I decided to give birth at home. So if you're pregnant or when you get pregnant, you're interested in a home birth, I just think it was such a great experience. And definitely don't let people scare you into thinking that you're totally not capable of giving birth to your baby naturally. And if you desire to, at home. Some people want a home birth for purely financial reasons. If you live in the U.S. and you don't have insurance, a home birth might simply be the more cost-effective route. If you live in a rural area that's hours away from the nearest hospital, you might want a home birth simply to avoid having to give birth in your car on the side of the road. Although, from what I've seen, that can also be a beautiful experience. Oh, baby's out, baby's out, baby's out, baby's out, baby's with mommy. Jesus. Do not hang up. I want you to hold the baby against your chest, Erica. Yeah. Okay. It's the vehicle description. Uh, white Dodge Ram. White Dodge Ram. Is the baby crying, Erica? No, not no. Yet. Is the baby crying? Wipe the smell? Yes, thank God. <laughs> great job. Oh. All right, you want the baby to cry. Close you did a great job. Close okay. It. How's mom doing? I'm fine, I'm fine. Probably the most cited reason I've seen for wanting a home birth is avoiding what's known as the cascade of medical interventions. For instance, if you get an epidural, you're more likely to have difficulty pushing. And if you have difficulty pushing, you're more likely to end up having a birth that's assisted by forceps and can also result in injuries that make it more difficult for your pelvic floor to recover. Epidurals can also increase the likelihood that you'll need a C-section, which again is a much more difficult recovery process than what you would experience with vaginal birth. According to the California Healthcare Foundation, epidurals are not needed in most low-risk births, and they can lead to a sudden drop in blood pressure, longer labor, difficulty moving about, difficulty pushing the baby about, fever, or other problems. Home birth advocates push the idea that instead of using an epidural for pain relief, it can be just as effective, if not more effective, to get in a tub filled with warm water, to use various breathing exercises, and get into different birthing positions to alleviate the pain of labor. I initially thought that tearing was one of the main reasons I wouldn't want a home birth, but it turns out that might not actually be correct and that a lot of the medical interventions in hospital births are what make it more likely for you to have a third or fourth degree tear. I think every time you use the word tear, I die a little more. It's so funny, like I feel like the idea of tearing freaks you out more than me, and it's gonna be me who's tearing. I'm not worried about it. Cut to me screaming in yeah. three months. Ah, I'm tearing <laughs> apart. You were right, Andrew. This is horrible. This is the worst thing ever. I think I am going to get an epidural. Yeah. Not for me, but for you. For me. For you. I'll have one too. We'll get it together. <laughs> I've heard a lot of people bring up being induced or having the process of labor get chemically moved along as being very traumatic and very painful. If labor doesn't get started, doctors will sometimes use a drug called Pitocin that forces your cervix to open. I'll be honest, I don't really get what the anti-induction crowd is all about. And if you know, let me know in the comments. It seems like in a lot of cases, inductions are medically necessary. Like you'll be induced if you've been pregnant for longer than 40 weeks and your amniotic fluid is starting to deplete, which is obviously not good for your fetus. My understanding that induction would happen in the case of infection. In the case of infection, obviously you wanna get your baby out of there as quickly as possible, so. Why is that bad? <laughs> Seems good. <coughs> While I'm totally sympathetic to the argument that at-home births are perfectly suitable for low-risk pregnancies where mom and baby are both healthy and uncomplicated cases, I think that it's unhelpful that so many of the home birth, free birth advocates put this woo-woo spin on things. There's so much guilt already attached to every decision that you make as a mother-to-be. It sucks that there has to be this other element of like, don't you want to be magical at home in a tub? Or do you want to be a loser who relies on a doctor? And it's like, 
uh, my back's kind of against the wall here. I don't really feel like I have a choice. Like, if they tell me I'm high risk, I'm gonna believe them. A lot of the especially free birth content I've consumed, I hear a similar refrain of, we're made to do this. We've, we've given birth for thousands of years on our own. Mistrustful of modern medicine to the very core, this fruity pair have never had a scan, and they'll be giving birth at home with just their schnauzers for midwives. A lot of people do think I'm doing something that's really mad. They think unassisted is a risk, but I think I think that's just like the fear of our culture. You know, like people think birth has to be painful and, and has to be medicalized. If birth was such a dangerous medical situation, then we wouldn't have evolved this far as a species. We just wouldn't have made it. Such a new thing to have any kind of medical intervention. Yeah, which is a good thing for moms and babies. Maternal death rates used to be staggeringly high. Today, approximately 15 per 100,000 women who give birth die in childbirth. A hundred years ago, it was more like 600 women per 100,000 births. And in the 1600s and 1700s, it was one in a hundred births the mom died. I don't like those odds. This is part of what's known as the appeal to nature fallacy. The logical fallacy that because something is natural, that must mean it's better. I think my girl Werner Herzog put it best. Taking a close look at, at what's around us, there, there is some sort of a harmony. It is the harmony of overwhelming and collective murder. And we have to become humble in front of this overwhelming misery and overwhelming fornication, overwhelming growth and overwhelming lack of order. Even the, the stars up here in the, in the sky look like a mess. There is no harmony in the universe. We have to get acquainted to this idea that there is no real harmony as we have conceived it. If you look closely, nature is actually disgusting and brimming with death. And I, for one, would like to keep it as far as possible from my birthing experience. And of course, with any fringe group, there's an even fringier fringe of that fringe <laughs> where stuff like this happens and once you're giving birth in the ocean you're just a few doggy paddles away from a dolphin assisted birth i was called here during my pregnancy through dreams to be with the dolphins i didn't really know what to expect but I just felt inside this is the place that I'm supposed to be to give birth. And as soon as I saw the dolphins, I knew this is why we're here. This is it, the dolphin assisted birth. Registered midwives complete a three year degree. Dolphins don't, that doesn't stop them assisting at birth as dolphin midwives. The benefits of dolphin assisted birth are uh... children who have been born after being exposed to dolphins or dolphin activated. Clicks and whistles come out of them, like in the beginning, which is cool. Like before they can speak, they're making clicks and whistles, which are dolphin noises. Here's an OBGYN explaining why giving birth in the ocean might not be such a great idea. Definitely not get ocean water all in that. That's one of the things that we tell women after they have a baby is don't go, don't submerge underwater. So don't have bath, don't take a, a bath through submerge underwater, don't go to the pool, you know, because you, we want all that, we want everything to heal, we don't want you to get infected. And not only is this like going in the, under the water, but like in the ocean, it's not clean. Like, yeah, I get it, it's like, it's not sewage, but like, it's babe, not clean. Babe, you're getting like a little fiery right now. It's, it's really, I'm grossed out. Here's a doula responding, saying, Oh yeah? You can get an infection in the ocean? Well, you can get an infection in hospitals also. Here's the thing, you can't sue the ocean for medical malpractice. 
Uh, getting an infection after giving birth in the ocean is a pretty expected, one might say foreseeable outcome. Whereas if you get an infection in the hospital, which does happen way more than it should, it's because somebody didn't do their job correctly. It's at least not supposed to happen. If you go to the Instagram page of the woman who gave birth in the ocean, you'll see she is selling a water birth masterclass because of course she is. In fact, a lot of the home birth footage I found on YouTube was attached in some way to an online home birthing course. Something to keep in mind as you consume home birth content is that a lot of these people have a vested interest in only showing you the most positive possible outcomes. Caveat emptor, as the saying goes. After doing some of this research into all the things that can go wrong when you're in labor, it just seems like you make a lot of decisions in the moment and a lot of it is out of your control. If you have any magical birth tips, go ahead and leave them below. If there's any other aspect of labor or birth or woo-woo out there, crunchy mom, birth tactics, let me know. I'd love to cover more stuff like this. I've only scratched the surface. If you like this video, subscribe and give it a thumbs up. I'd also recommend that you watch this video next.